Dr. Frankel, what is the difference between people who are able to pick themselves up, get over life's problems, and those who are not? The decisive factor is decision, the freedom to, of choice, the freedom to come up with a decision. It should be, I would like to become this way or another in spite of conditions that should only seem to fully determine my behavior. I wish to act freely as a responsible being, which is a human being. I wish to act in accord with heredity and environment, using, owing what I become to them, but also, if need be, in spite of the worst conditions. That, this is exactly what you could watch and witness under severe, extreme conditions of, strength, of, of stress or of uh, or tragic conditions. Just think of uh, people uh, living for several years under the worst conditions of prisoner of war camp. There is a whole body of, of, uh, of psychiatric literature about that, or for that matter, in concentration camps. And this is what should be acknowledged. People are free, and if you watch or study the lives of such people in just a detached, down-to-earth, empirical, strictly empirical, scientific way and fashion, other, in another way than you presented it and you commented it in another way, then people get the picture, the impression of a human being as something, not someone, something that is fully determined whereas they don't recognize and acknowledge the freedom and the responsibility, the responsibility for themselves, the responsibility for making something or someone out of himself. So your basic philosophy is that life has meaning under all conditions, but how easy is it when there's a sense of hopelessness, a sense of despair, to recognize this meaning? Let me present you, confront you with a somewhat uh, strange definition of despair. As I'm used to uh, proclaiming is that despair uh, can be explained in terms of a mathematical equation. D, capital D, equals S minus M. What does it mean? Despair is suffering without meaning. As long as an individual cannot find, cannot see any meaning in his or her despair, he or she will certainly be prone to, in its suffering, I wanted to say, no meaning in the suffering, he or she will, uh, her will certainly be prone to despair and, under certain conditions, to suicide. But at the moment they can see a meaning in their suffering, they can mold it into an achievement, into a, they can mold their predicament into an accomplishment on the human level. They can turn their tragedies into a personal triumph but they must know for what, what should I do with it. But if people like so many segments of present day society and population cannot find any meaning whatsoever in their lives, cannot see anything meaningful, they more often than not have uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, something to live by, uh, I'll say at least enough to live by, they cannot see anything to live for. What is the answer to the question, why me? Why did this happen to me? The uh, answer to such a question is nothing that a psychiatrist or any other type of a scientist <coughs> can come up. But I would not uh, share the opinion of, say, Jean Paul Sartre, who said we have to accept and uh, to shoulder courageously, heroically, the absolute meaninglessness of our lives. But what I think is rather that what we have to accept is the incapacity of uh, 
our, uh, of our humanness, the incapacity to recognize the ultimate meaning in intellectual or merely rational terms. This is the only thing we have to accept. But still, we may believe in a in ultimate meaning, but to, to uh, lead someone, say a patient, to, uh, to eve the way for him to such a belief, to faith, is of course not the business or job to be carried out by a psychiatrist, but rather by a theologian. Tell me, to what extent do you feel we have choices in the things that befall us? Our freedom is a finite freedom a limited freedom. That is to say, a human being is never fully free from conditions, be they of biological or psychological or sociological uh, kind. But the ultimate freedom is always and remains always reserved to ourselves. That is the freedom to take a stand to whatever conditions might confront us. How we react to the unchangeable conditions is up to ourselves. In other words, if we cannot change a situation, we have always the last freedom to change our attitude to that situation. Dr. Frankel, give me an example of meaning that can be taken out of a situation of despair. I once received a letter from a young Taxan uh, student who told me his own story. At the age of 17 years, he had an accident when uh, uh, indulging to his driving, uh, diving sport. And from that time on, he was paralyzed from the neck down. And he wrote to me, I broke my neck but it did not break me. I am at present helpless, and this handicap will remain with myself apparently forever. But I have not given up my studies. I went because of my own helplessness to help other people. I want to become a psychologist to help others. And I'm sure, he wrote to me, that my suffering will add an essential contribution to my ability to understand others and to help other people. This man, three, three years later, was invited by me to deliver a lecture, to read a paper at the Third World Congress of Logotherapy taking place at the University uh, of Regensburg in West Germany. He was brought in and with his wheelchair by a plane from Texas to West Germany and delivered a lecture under the title The Defiant Power of the Human Spirit. And the last sentence read, I know that this is true because that man was me.